And they usually wake up almost exactly five hours after their last drink. Your body can be exhausted and crying out for sleep, but you can't physically sleep because you've got all those stimulants kicking around in your system. The other myth that I would love to talk to you about, because I know you feel really strongly about this, is sleep. Um, yes. Because a lot of people say it helps them to sleep. So what would you say about that? So there's two sort of strands to this. I've already touched on how when you take alcohol, you, you sedate your brain brain but then it goes into an oversensitive phase so you've got that sort of balance going on <clears throat> almost like a swing swinging one way and then swinging back the other way um then to apply it to sleep i think very quickly it's useful just to understand a bit about sleep a lot of people just vaguely think that sleep is you know you fall into bed you go unconscious for a few hours and you wake up and you're good to go it, it, it's not as simple as that when you sleep naturally you go through very specific sleep cycles so very, very briefly, there's deep sleep, which, as you can imagine, you're very deeply unconscious. But there's another sleep cycle called REM sleep, which stands for rapid eye movement, because when you're asleep, your eyes flicker, even though your eyes are closed. Um, it's a very interesting sleep part of the sleep cycle, because when they um, monitor people in REM sleep, their brain lights up almost as if they're fully awake it's um it's when you dream so the dreams come in rem sleep whereas with deep sleep your body is physically regenerating and recuperating rem sleep is when you're mentally processing things and your brain and mental health is actually um recuperating okay so it's a hugely important part of sleep they've done tests on rats where they've starved them of rem sleep and they've been dead within a few weeks They've done volunteer studies with humans where it sounds like it sounds horrible. You you go up to this sleep clinic and you sleep there and they attach sensors to you. And when you go into REM sleep, they wake you up. So they don't stop you sleeping. They just stop you getting REM sleep. And within a day or two, people become very depressed, very disorientated. So it has a massive effect on your mental health. Now, when you drink alcohol, for the first part of the evening or the first part of your sleep, the first four or five hours, you're too heavily sedated to go into REM sleep. So there was a statistic I heard the other day where I think the average amount of REM sleep is two and a half hours. Naturally, that's what you should be getting each night. If you have one or two alcohol or alcoholic drinks, so not a massive amount, one or two will halve it. And then I think a couple more than that drags it down to like half an hour. So you're on to like a fifth of what you should be getting. Um, and more than five or six, you get almost none at all. So you're having this massive impact on your REM sleep. Now, alcohol has a half-life of five hours. What half-life means is how long it takes for the amount of drug in your system to drop by half. So if you have 10 units, within five hours, it's dropped to five. OK, so what we normally find is when you hit that five hour mark, because the sedatives have dropped and the stimulant side starting to kick in, you wake up. Um, it's almost like drinking. This is what I often say to people. Say you sleep from 11 at night to seven in the morning. That's eight hours. OK, that's you at your best. Drinking alcohol is like setting an alarm for three or four in the morning and getting up and drinking seven or eight mugs of strong black coffee to lie there twitching and, you know, oh. your mind. That's what happens. <laughs> it's the equivalent because that's when the alcohol drops and the stimulants kick in. And that's why people find they usually wake up almost exactly five hours after their last drink to be unable to get back to sleep. Your body can be exhausted and crying out for sleep, but you can't physically sleep because you've got all those stimulants kicking around in your system. Okay. And is that what people call anxiety? Yeah, exactly. It's the same side of it. It's almost like drinking, you know, when you drink too much caffeine and you feel very on edge and nervous and you can't sleep, it's exactly the same thing. Yeah. Um, so the point there is alcohol has a massive impact on your REM sleep. And, you know, again, just to give a sort of a brief snippet of the summary, there's a whole world of difference between alcohol induced in unconsciousness and sleep. So get that into your mind. Alcohol induced unconsciousness is not sleep. The biggest reported symptom of a hangover is tiredness. And even one or two drinks will interrupt your natural sleeping cycle. So it doesn't matter whether you're drinking a dozen drinks every night or just one every couple of days. It has a huge impact on your sleeping cycle. So 
it ruins your sleep and makes you feel tired <laughs> is the yeah. short answer. But the other branch to this that I mentioned at the beginning, so slightly separate this. So you or I, you and I don't drink. OK, so when we get towards bedtime, our brain naturally starts releasing more sedatives to calm things down. It starts closing everything down and we drift into a natural and restorative sleep. Um, and that's why we've talked so much about good sleep hygiene, you know, get away from the white lights, um, have a bedroom only for sleeping, you know, a hot bath or relax or dim the lights or whatever. And all that really is, is sending the message to your brain to say, right, it's bedtime, start closing everything down so we can go into, as I say, natural sleep. When you drink alcohol regularly, your brain doesn't go through that process because it just relies on the sedating effects of the alcohol. So your brain's doing it you start drinking each evening and your brain doesn't go through that close down process why would it need to because it knows that every night it's got this sedative coming into its system that closes things down for it you know the brain's a great adapter it adapts when we drink and it adapts when we stop drinking so what people find is if you're drinking regularly and you have a night off you'll find it incredibly hard to get to sleep because your brain's not used to going through this closing down process. And actually, you have to wait three to five days. for It doesn't take long, but it is a few nights when your sleep's impacted before your brain realises, oh, this sedative's no longer here. I need to stop picking up the slack and doing it myself. But the problem is that's people's experience. So if you're drinking every day or most days and you have a day off, you find it incredibly hard to fall to sleep. And then the next day you have a drink and you can go to sleep easily or sleep in inverted commas. It's actually, as I say, alcohol induced unconsciousness, which isn't sleep anyway. But that's what happens. So people end up with these very deeply held beliefs that alcohol helps you sleep because their personal experience is I can fall asleep when I'm drinking. But when I'm not, I simply cannot sleep at all. So it creates that horrible nightmare situation where they're getting increasingly tired because they're drinking and they're not going through the right sleep cycles. Sleep becomes increasingly precious. But when they try and stop, they can't sleep. So they're almost clinging on even harder to alcohol because it's the only way they can get to sleep. And as I say, they're becoming increasingly tired, not realising that actually you need to jettison it completely have a few nights of bad sleep before you get back to normal, then catch up on sleep. And that's when the tiredness finally leaves you for good. It's fascinating, isn't it? I mean, when you think about it, we've, we're all running around thinking it helps me relax. It relieves my stress. It relieves my anxiety. It helps me sleep. But the reality is that it actually causes those problems. And therefore, we're trying to relieve those problems with the thing that caused them. I think that's... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think this kind of stuff was the information I did have when I quit drinking. And I think that's what gave me the key to stopping is that I knew after a few days, my brain chemistry would get back to normal. I'd feel much better. I'd start sleeping better. I knew that in a week or two, I'd start to feel much, much better. And that was what gave me the key to quitting. And it was then over time that I found like social occasions, vacations, holidays, Christmas, all that were not only enjoyable, but actually more enjoyable without alcohol. I think that's how it all sort of pieced together for me.